Hey, what's up, New York City? Welcome to Airtime. I'm your host, Kamal James. Airtime is a space and place for teens and young adults from across the five boroughs to showcase their crafts. I'm talking MCs, spoken word artists, visual artists, writers, and musicians. If you feel your artistic expression deserves some airtime, stay tuned till the end of the show. On this half of the show, I have with me Harlem born and bred spoken word artist, Yanni Young. She's 16 years old and a junior at Talent Unlimited High School. But believe me, her words transcend her age. Welcome, Yanni. Hi. So what's your inspiration behind your writing? Uh, I would say things that I go through, things that impact me, whether directly or indirectly, um, what I see on the news, things around me, and what's happening in America. Any examples, you know, anything coming? Yeah, um, I would say police brutality, um, stop and frisk, because, I mean, I've never, I don't know anyone personally who's been um, beaten or shot and killed by a, a police officer, but I have met people and had friends who were stop and frisks and how they were handled. And just things like that really bother me, and I feel like those things should be spoken about, because we're Definitely. kind of like, we'll talk about them and we'll get riled up about it. And then after a while, we kind of like die down and it's, that's you know, true. and that's, and it kind of brings me to like, you know, African-Americans want to get together and, you know, when a tragedy happens, mm -hmm. but then after that tragedy has, you know, it's passed, it's like we go on yeah. about our daily lives. So those are like, that's the reason why I write about those things. I definitely agree with that. Like in terms of progression and, you know, people moving forward and, you know, you have an issue and you tackle it head on and then what happens after that? Yeah, I mean, I think it's good to progress, but at the same time, it shouldn't, you know, I know when after the Trayvon Martin case, I remember on Instagram, people were like, oh, I want to start organizations. I want to do marches. And I, you know, I think that we should all like, get together and do things about this. Then after a couple of weeks, people went back to their daily lives. No one had started yeah. anything. They may have gone to the to the um, the march that happened in, I think it started in like Union Square or something yeah. and worked its way up to Harlem. But I mean, other than that, like people really weren't, you know, it just. I mean, you, yeah. I, I mean, I, I totally agree, but you know, it's, it's hard sometimes to be active. You know, when you're active in the community, you know, there's only so much you can do sometimes, you know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, you can't really fight the power, you know? But I mean, in terms of like progression, I remember we had a conversation earlier and you know, you were talking about, you know, all humans are a work in progress, you know, yeah. elaborate on that. Well, I mean, I know I said I was a work in progress because I, I just felt like I'm every day I'm growing and every day I'm learning new things about myself and I'm realizing things that I may need to work on and things that I feel like, you know, oh, I'm getting better at this or, okay, I need to pull back. You know, what can I do to change myself for the better? So that I just, I mean, everyone's a work in progress, but I, I like to focus on myself so that way I can improve in life, I guess. And would you say, you know, being a spoken word artist, it helped you grow as a person? Almost definitely, because when you first start writing poetry, you know, however long you've written poetry for, it's kind of like a timeline. So it's reading, going back in my journal, I have a lot of poetry and unfinished things, but I'll read a first one and then I'll read stuff that I've written now and I, I can see that like I've grown as, an, as a writer and my words, that, I mean, it's easy for me to express how I feel on paper. Um, so yeah, and I've also written a lot more too. A word? Yeah. I mean, do you even remember, you know, the first thing you ever wrote? The first poem that I wrote was called Who Am I? And it's very straightforward because the title is Who Am I? But it was um, like where I was from, which is Harlem, and who I thought I was. So, Who yeah. did you think you were? Yeah, I don't really, 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 like, I don't even know if I had an idea of who I was. I was just like... I don't know, it's something silly, it was like, my name is Yanni and I'm from, not like that, but it was like, I'm from Harlem, five foot seven, and I don't even, it was something that kind of, I don't even know how to, I don't know everything that I wrote, but it was who am I, and it's like, just little things that, it was more like a description, but it was cool, I liked it. What made you pick up the pen and, you know, write that poem? Um, it all stemmed from the fact that I was the type of person who like bottled in my emotions, which is a terrible thing, which led to me having anxiety. So wow. my mom was always just like, you know, if you ever, if you need to, uh, you know, release things, you have to tell people. And which Very I started true. doing and I started um, opening up to my parents about things. And I also just started writing and that helped immensely because, you know, I think with emotions, you know, it's people see that like emotions are a sign of weakness. So I kept yeah. everything to myself, which was a terrible idea. But after I started writing a lot more and then accumulating friends who also wrote poetry or were, mm -hmm. other form, were other artists and 
kind of all gone through the same things, it was really nice because I opened up, so then other people opened up mm. as well, and that's how I formed friendships, and that's how I was able to grow because I wasn't the only one going through something. And I think that's what people tell themselves, that they're the only ones going through something, which right. is not true because we it's all true. go through things. And you need to open up because you need people there for you to grow sure. and to heal as well. And so, you know, when was this transition from being a poet to, you know, a spoken word artist? You know, what propelled that? Uh, it all started when I joined the Junior Scholars Program at the Schomburg. That was my sophomore year in high school. Um, towards the second half of the program, they had everyone got to separate into groups. It was their special groups project, and I joined the spoken word group. And joining that spoken word group, we would have workshops on writing, and we would be given a prompt, and we would have five minutes to write out a poem on that prompt. Wow. And we would have to recite it in front of people, which I had no problem doing. I like being in front of people, but that's like what what propelled me into being a spoken word artist and that was my first time performing in front of a large group of people because we had wow. ended up having our youth summit in May which was I mean the whole entire auditorium was pretty much packed so wow. it was really cool. And you weren't nervous at all? That'd be a lie if I said I wasn't nervous. No I was really nervous but like when the lights when you when you're under that spotlight everyone else in the audience is really dark which I like because you can't really see people's faces, but you can hear them if they're making a sound. But it's not as bad as like seeing a whole bunch of people staring at you. Yeah. And you don't even know who they are. You may like see some people that you know, but like that's really nerve wracking. So it helped. So that, yeah, it wow. did. Nice. I mean, so how often do you write? Um, I try to write every other day. I don't write every single day, but any time that I have an idea in my head or a thought is like, it's lingering in my mind, I'll write about it, or I'll, sometimes I'll come up with ideas, things that interest me, and I'll write about it, but I try to write as often as I can. Sometimes it doesn't work out, but I would say, if not every other day, then every week, but I try to write a lot. What would you anything. say is like the best recipe, you know, from when you, you know, start writing? Is it when you're by yourself, or when you have free time, or, or It you can are be anything, because honestly, like, I, there have been times, like, in the middle of class, it's not a good thing. You should be paying attention. Like, I've honestly, like, pulled out my poetry journal, and, like, real quick, I have to, like, write out something, because if I don't, I'll lose it. And I remember one time I was walking home, and I had an idea in my head, and I was trying to replay it in my mind wow. until I got home, but then I lost it, and I was really upset. So, anywhere, it doesn't matter if I'm around people, if I'm not, if, if I have something to write, I have to write it or type it or something, because then I'll lose it. Hmm. So you, you write on impulse, pretty much. Yeah, basically. Okay. That's good. Do you have anything you're working on now? Yeah, um, I'm also in the spoken word group again this year. Oh, wow. And um, I totally forgot what our theme was. No, our theme is artivism. That's what our theme is, it's artivism. Oh, okay. And uh, my poem, it's so, this prompt was to write about someone who wants to be, who wants to act on things, who wants to make a change, but they're afraid to. They might be complacent. Mm -hmm. So my person, she's writing from someone who sees, you know, her brothers and sisters, not in a literal sense, but you know, her people getting brutalized by the police, but she's not doing anything about it. And she then compares herself to the police officers because they're beating them out of fear and they're also cowards, but mm -hmm. she's also cowering to the side and she's also in fear because she doesn't know what to do. So she starts comparing herself and it's not done yet, but that's like the premise of what the, the poem's gonna be about. Nice. And I heard you say artivism. What exactly an, is artivism? An artivist is an artist and an activist, which is combine the two and I wanna be an artivist. I want to be an artivist. I like art. Um, and I mean, I like expressing myself just in various forms. Anything that I can get my hands on, I like to express myself, whether it be visual, whether it be um, writing poetry, anything. And then I also want to be an activist because I want to fight for people's rights. I don't want to, nice. I'm not really fond of, it's just me personally, I don't like watching things happen and then not being able to do anything about it. So just, I want to use my art as a form of activism. That's awesome, man, because, you know, young people these days, you know, I wouldn't say all, but right. there are some who, you know, aren't really, I would say, aware of what's going on. You know, they don't really go out there, you know, research or, you know, be active. And that's pretty good coming from a youngster. Yeah, I you think know? it's also because a lot of us are so desensitized to what's going on. Because yeah. whenever you watch the news and you see a young back black boy getting shot and killed, you might be upset for a little bit, but then it kind of is like, oh, well, that happens all the time. And me, I don't like that. Things like that bother me because I have brothers, and I, and I have, you know, a stepfather and a father. I wouldn't want them to like walk outside one day, 
and get harassed and then get shot and killed and then have that person that killed them not, you know, get penalized for it. So it's kind of, and, and that reminded me of a, of a thing that I had written about Trayvon Martin was, what's a black child's worth in America? And I feel like that's, it's like so relevant because it, and things like this are happening and they've been happening for a very long time, but they're still happening. And it's like, I'm not saying I know what to do to stop it, but just something really has to be done because it's like, if, if people can just kill, you know, innocent black young men and yeah. also innocent young black women and then not get penalized for it, it's like, so what are we worth? Now, I'm sure the audience is itching to hear what you have to say. I know I myself, when I heard you, I was fascinated. So I'm sure to be blown away. So let's take a look. First piece is in, well, it's untitled. I've been set in the sun too long not to know who I am. And the fact that my skin has been kissed by the gods tanned to perfection. The measurements of my being make up every aspect of me. Cups of compassion inspire my every action to free people's minds from the ghettos. Ignorance has taken way too much of a toll in the way we think. We've been misguided and divided by the media who's supposed to deliver the truth. If this world were mine, women would be treated as queens and not secondary playthings, disregarded and beaten to death because somehow are less than human to you. You must not know that killing a queen is committing a universal crime. For queens were descended from goddesses, dethroned from their sky thrones, to be placed upon the earth where their inner light shines and awakens the souls of those who haven't found their light yet. The stars and planets have aligned to become the home to the quintessential abstract being that I call myself. I'm not a murderer of people, but of negativity and uncertainty that accumulates from fear, and that's what I need to get rid of, for I'm in control of my life, even if I don't know which direction I'm taking or where. A pure heart and a chaotic mind only lead to confusions and illusions diluted with unrealistic conclusions that haven't been determined yet. This piece is entitled, What's Real? We carry social media sites on our backs like second skin, hoping to be reborn again into a new identity. A thousand likes can gain a person notoriety with fake admiration from a bunch of people you don't even know. It's become our backbone. We rely on it when we feel down about ourselves in a place where some try to live vicariously through others. Relationships aren't even real unless you post them on your page and remember to like all of their photos. And don't even dare to like another female's photo because that'll constitute you as being a flirt. But the last time I checked, flirting was a physical action, not the involvement of using one's thumb to double tap a photo. We're being blinded, forgetting that verbal communication is key and contact with one another is what strengthens our bonds. The internet is just a facade, a gateway to tap into the unknown, which in actuality isn't reality. This next piece is entitled Human Revolution. We look outside of ourselves to seek change, but it begins within us. Realizing that our truth lies within the soul, encapsulated by doubt, fear, and that never-ending temptation to feed ourselves with a negative assumption that we can't reach our full potential. Holding us back attached to puppet strings, and until we take control of our own lives, we will forever be used and misguided as our lives play out before us. To challenge ourselves, to transform our lives at the deepest level, is a human revolution. Revolting against the status quo and social structure that so many live under, revealing our innate power to transform the world around us. Facing every challenge head on like a courageous lion, stepping out of the gates of hell. For once those gates have been opened, there's no turning back. Building our new selves by breaking out of old molds and reshaping the world's consciousness to attain everlasting peace. Thank you. Welcome back. If you didn't believe me, you got the chance to see that this young lady's words is filled with wisdom. If you're now tuning in, this is Airtime, and I'm your host, Kamal James. With me, I have spoken word artist and future activist, Yanni Young. So a little birdie told me that, you know, you could sing and, you know, in, in conjunction with all this activism and spoken word, you know, you're also a fan of the old school and the old soul classics just as well as me. So to close out this segment, we are going to play a game called Recycle Rhythm. Okay. You ready? Yes. Here's how it works. Okay. So I'll play a song that consists of a sample, and you'll have to identify the original song that that song sampled from. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> Listen. 
lyrics to go. Lyrics to go. Lyrics to go. Lyrics to go. Alright, so that was Lyrics to Go by a tribe called Quest. Do you know where they you know where they sample that from? I know the the group, the tribe called Quest, but I have no idea what they sampled. Alright. Take a guess. That that the the guitar riff thingy that da, 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 da. I was talking about the organ in the background. There's no, I have no idea. No idea. Mm -mm. All right, you won't believe this. The original song is actually from Minnie Ripperton, "Inside My Love." Yeah, I was off. It's all right. <laughs> um, better better look next time, you know. So, where can people hear more of your stuff and you know get to know Yanni and you know hear your artistic expression? Um, I'm working on uh, putting my spoken word on my YouTube channel. So I have nothing on there yet. So I wouldn't, you know, I, don't, I wouldn't give the name of that yet. Um, the most you could find me on would be Twitter and my Instagram. Okay, cool. Um, what's your, would you like to tell them? Yeah. What? So my Instagram is archaicsoul7. And then my Twitter is lioness underscore ya. Cool. Well, this wraps up the first half of our show. Thank you so much, Yanni, for coming out and showing the world your talent. Mm -hmm. I think we will all agree that Yanni deserves some airtime. Although Yanni's leaving, don't go anywhere. Coming up next, lyricist Sundiata Small. Hello, ladies and gents. Welcome to another segment of Airtime. I'm your host, Kamal James. Airtime is a space and place for young teens and adults from across the five. Joining me is lyricist Sundiata Small. Welcome, Sundiata. Hey, what's up, man? How's everything going? Everything's good over here. What you been up to? Um, just working with the music and everything, you know, school on top of that, which is like a little bit to juggle at times. But, you know, it's, it's actually like getting it's getting me a little bit more focused. Well, a lot more focused on my priorities and everything, because, you know, like in school, sometimes if you don't have everything, anything going on outside, you're just like, oh, I'm in school. What am I doing with myself? You know? But <laughs> yeah. Yeah, understood. Cool. Cool. So why don't you tell the world about um, Urban Gurus? So um, Urban Gurus, we are, Kari, he, he explained it like this. He said, we're children of, like, indigo children in a way. Just not, I don't know about me, literally, but, <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, man, but we are just people who came came to the on the path of enlightenment, not always by, in the best way, but we're here now, and this is this is what it's about. We're here. We're about teaching people you know, to love themselves, be aware spiritually what's going on with themselves and everything, you know. Cool, cool, cool. And, I mean, I know a little bit about Kari, but where do you, where does your inspiration come from? <sighs> um, my inspiration comes from my family mm -hmm. and just the environment that I grew up in because I was always around, like, very positive. It was always a lot of love and positivity because I kept, grew up in Brooklyn and on, on um, in Fort Greene and around the 90s. So it was just everything was warm. Everybody knew each other around there, you know. So it was it was all always about love. And my mom's really like Afrocentric and spiritual, so right. she would teach me. So it's like teaching her teachings, passing those teachings on. You know, it's cool. Um, so what what have you been working on now? Anything current? Um. Yesterday, actually, um, I forgot to tell you because it happened like the dude told me about it like last minute, like a day or two before we were supposed to go on. But we had another performance at the BK Museum. And yeah, he was like, yo, can I ask you for a last minute favor? I was like, what's, what's up? And he was like, yo, can you perform? Can you get Urban Gurus to perform this Friday? I was like, oh, all right, cool. I mean, that's cool. But, you know, sometimes it's like that. Would you say you know, you look up to when it comes to writing and, you know, rapping? In terms of lyrical content, I look up to Bob because sometimes I actually question myself as to, like, if the whole, like, people will feel the positivity, you know, like, because not everyone, everyone would be like, oh, that's whack, he's, he's, like, corny, you know, so sometimes I got to put it in a poetic, poet, use my poetic prose with it, you know, to get it in a way that they'll, like, feel it and, like, it'll touch them deeper than me just saying, yo, love yourself. <laughs> spiritual awareness is the way <laughs> you know what I'm saying but like Bob and then when it comes to lyrical flow I look at people like Chance um, mm -hmm. Kendrick 
uh, most deaf, Definitely. you know, Talib, people, yeah. you know. So, yeah, man. And when when did you start actually rapping? rapping? Yeah. Seventh grade. Wow. Seventh grade, yeah. I was, my mom put me on to this movie, um, The Hip Hop Project. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it just got me really interested in it because it they they were the ones who I first saw going, like, you know, that, like, and the gangster stuff, you know, the whole, oh, I'm killing, da 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 da, like, mm -hmm. get money, FBs, and all that stuff. It was just like, you know, telling the story. They, they, it wasn't necessarily on spiritual awareness, but they were telling who they were as people, you know, not, not putting on this mask, mm. you know what I'm saying? So that's where it came from first. That's where, the f like, my interest in rapping and flowing came from and content and stuff, and then I just gradually got better with it. How do you feel about um, these rappers nowadays, you know? You know, rap is getting less and less conscious. And, yeah. Uh, um, it's interesting because I talk about this with my friends and we talk about it all the time, yeah. you know, like rap, rap right now, the <coughs> underground movement that's going on with rappers like Chance, um, not really k Out, but Pro Era, mm -hmm. um, Underachievers, you know, yeah. Flatbush Zombies, they it's starting to bring it's starting to slowly bring back the like that 90s hip-hop and like when hip-hop was powerful and everything but like as a like the most popular hip-hop i it's i can't even call it hip-hop i just feel like it's just people just talking over beats yeah you know? just definitely and also even with um you heard about the the secret meeting that killed hip-hop in 1991 no i didn't hear about that well i mean i I'll explain it much later, uh, but it pretty much like puts to life why, what hip hop has become. You know, it's misogynistic now. Yeah, it's yeah, uh, they talk about drugs and mm -hmm. you know they promote this, you know, to the young kids and you know they're really impressionable and it's a long story. It goes really deep, but I'm not too much to scratch the <laughs> surface. But definitely, we need to bring um, conscious hip hop and rap back. Yeah, man. Um, so I think. I think the audience wants to know how you sound. They want to know what you're about. So I think we need to give them a shot. So if you're now tuning in, this is Lyricist Sundi out of Small. Check it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh. Honey, honey, you know I love thee. Love so lovely. lovely, you make me sunny. sunny. You make me sunny. sunny. You make me sunny. sunny. You make me sunny. Shine a dumb leg. Because you love me, lovely, honey, honey, you know I love thee, lovely, so lovely, lovely, you make me sunny, sunny, you make me sunny, sunny, you make me sunny, sunny, sunny. shine a dumb leg. Yo, will I remember the first time when I wait? Why should I worry now? Would that be my biggest mistake? I fear the fear of voice, not knowing when they're gonna shake. But I mean, that's common sense. Is it coming and coming late? To stick the stake in the face of me and is life is great? Or rip the leaf for the freely tree cause you had to hate? Now what I'm saying to stay the way it's staying away, staying safe from the hatred that most take cause the money makes? Could I still look in the eyes of a baby's face? Have to make my day, make me say in this place we call haven safe cause they haven safe, it's your safe haven, rake and chase and hate away. Is that the way I should live? Cause it doesn't seem to say My mind delays when I lay these questions that seem to blaze Never raise, raise them up like raisins, my reasons sway But that's okay, knowing nothing just takes the stress away When you sing there and say, hey, my adolescence is pace Yo, honey, honey, you know I love thee, love thee. So lovely, lovely, you make me sunny, sunny. You make me sunny, sunny. you make me sunny, sunny. You shine a dumb lane. Because you love me, love me, honey, honey. You know I love thee, love thee. So lovely, lovely, you make me sunny, sunny. You make me sunny, you make me sunny, shine a dumb lane. Yo, telling me to be me, but you're telling me please the screen See, if me was me, I would be rapping songs about loving trees Not exactly what natural teens will be listening to, I mean, but that's me And me, it's easy to be so, I'ma be pleased, yo, yo Swim in the sea, swim in the breeze, spinning that sun I see Have you smiling, yo, that's the cheese, jeez That sheen shining skin is beauty to me Let the color scheme, color beam, beam you to see all of these leaves, please Why should I please all these dark and these, it's so weak And I'm sick and sick of these trees, you just rap about blood and deep Cause they're all just trying to be deep, all the shit is just sheep, sheep, sheep I'm bringing back on a definite death rap Who's in honey, these sweet tracks Tracking rap back to fat blast Cracking tracks back with fat rap Feeling good, yo, he's facts, facts Man, my life is right, Jack Keeping back all the weak wax Quacking a quack that stays flat <laughs> Blah 
honey, honey. You know I love thee, love thee. So lovely. lovely, you make me sunny, sunny. You make me sunny, sunny. You make me sunny, sunny. I'm shining dumb lay. Because you love me, love me. Honey, honey. You know I love thee, love thee. So lovely, lovely. You make me sunny, sunny. You make me sunny, sunny. You make me sunny, sunny. I'm shining dumb lay. Because you love me, love me. Because you love me, because you love me, love me. Rest in peace, Lou. That's what's up. If you're now tuning in, you just missed lyricist Sundi Ata Small performing his track Zoo. I'm your host Kamal James, and this is Airtime. So, Sundi, to wrap this up, we usually play a game called Recycle Rhythms. Okay. Now, here's how it goes. A song will be played consisting of a sample, and you are going to have to identify the original song that sampled it. I'm sure you know your music, so yeah. this should be nothing to you, right? Yeah, yeah. My, mom, my mom's watching, so I got to make sure I do okay. All right. Oh, gosh. <laughs> okay, you ready? Yeah. Yeah, let's go. All right. <laughs> So did you find out the original song? Nah, man, I don't. Aw, oh, man. The original song is Mystic Brew by Ronnie. Oh, yeah. snap, yo. And I listened to that track mm. all the What? See? Wow. Got nervous or something? Yeah, yeah, Sorry. man, I got, I got nervous, yo. Well, this wraps up Airtime's first show. Thank you, Sundiata. Of course, man. Thanks for having me. No problem. Much appreciated, bro. Um, if people want to find out your music and stuff like that, wh how can they contact you? Um, well, you can hit me up on Facebook, um, Sundiata, um, space with abstract thought. That is all one word. Facebook won't let me change it again, but hey. And um, on SoundCloud, I am Sundiata, abstract, and Urban Gurus, the SoundCloud for Urban Gurus is Guru Library, and on Facebook, we're Guru Urban Gurus. All right, thank you, Sundi, for sharing your artistic expression with Hey out there, if you or someone you know feels like your artistic talent deserves some airtime, hit me up at kamaljames.mnn at gmail.com.